Give us a broad overview, Mr. Kumar, on how you see the landscape changing. Now, you've been the head of the country's largest bank, and now you're in the, in the uh, middle of a uh, lot of uh, interesting developments at a fintech, at a leading fintech. So I would like to hear from you and then from the rest of the panelists on what is the changing landscape looking like for you. Thank you, Saurav, and thank you, Mr. Sri, for inviting me here. You rightly mentioned that the world today and our lives today, they all uh, revolve around a smartphone. Whatever you want to do, mobile is the solution. And in such a changing scenario, where technology is all prevalent, uh, the question about the banks, what they are doing, the NBFCs, what they are doing, and the fintechs, what they are doing. So all three, many things they are doing which are similar, but not all things are common amongst them. And each one of them, they have a certain advantage. So if I were to summarize uh, key or broad trends, uh, one is about technology, which we have, I have mentioned, but the regulation or regulatory aspect of it. So there was a time when regulatory arbitrage existed between banks, NBFCs and fintechs, but not the case anymore. So if you look at what Reserve Bank has done in the past, maybe two years, they have removed the regulatory arbitrage between NBFCs, banks and fintechs. Fintechs, they don't directly regulate, but the guidelines which Reserve Bank issued in November this year on digital lending guidelines. So it is more or less that not being directly regulated, but you are working with regulated entities and they are accountable to RBI. So indirectly, you are also accountable to RBI. Then how do different entities compete and what are their competitive advantages? So banks, obviously, no one can beat when it comes to trust factor, it is very high. Their capability to gather liabilities is unmatched. NBFCs and FinTech don't have that advantage. When it comes to NBFCs, they have done a wonderful job in terms of providing credit to that segment which otherwise legacy banks don't find it lendable. So that is their advantage. And the flexibility in terms of their HR policies, recruitment policies, last mile connectivities, that is NBFCs, but it was largely a physical infrastructure. Fintechs, they can't gather liabilities. They don't have a license to lend. But as I said that, they are playing a very critical role, again, in providing the last mile connectivity and through digital not physical. And that is the key differentiator as far as fintechs are concerned. And what a bank would do to acquire a customer in terms of cost, the fintech will do probably at 25-30% of the cost. So in terms of cost arbitrage, fintechs are today best placed as compared to NBFCs and the legacy banks. And the advantage in terms of uh, meeting the customer needs. Why they are flourishing? They are flourishing because I think the legacy institutions could not sense what the customer needs. There was a gap and which fintechs have very beautifully filled in. So the landscape which I see today in India, our country is so huge and is still developing. So there is a room for every player, everyone they are not exactly competitors to each other, but there's a huge scope for collaboration between all three. Uh, Murli, I'll come to you. Uh, essentially, all the big banks and even the smaller ones, the faster growing ones, the mid-sized ones, are investing in digital capabilities, like for the very same reasons which Mr. Kumar just mentioned, that you don't have uh, you know, the option anymore because everything is now uh, going digital and you have capabilities which are absolutely essential. How do you view this change and are you, do you think the mid-size and the smaller banks are equipped, are, are investing enough to take on these challenges? Uh, excellent question. Let me start by saying that I think the changes which you're witnessing today is actually the need of the hour. Because if you look at the, the increasing demography, we are actually talking about uh, 
customers who are in the age group of let's say 25 to 40 who are pretty much used to doing everything in digital way. So today whether one likes it or not, I think uh, what the customers would want is everything to be done at their convenience. Therefore, I would see technology change and all this, uh, uh, the paradigm shift which is happening in uh, banking space or in the financial services space is I think it's the right uh, uh, paradigm shift which is happening because that's the one which is going to help serve the customers. When it comes to uh, these changes, how a bank like ours, for example, view it, we are probably considered to be the biggest amounts of small banks, let me put it that way, because our asset size is still about 1,50,000 crores plus. When we look at it, we actually look at it as a boon because this best way to sort of bridge the gap between a small bank and a big bank, because today technology is available to all of us, tools are available to all of us, the fintechs and the NBFCs and small banks which are working with large banks, that opportunity is available for all of us. So we are actually seeing it as an opportunity because with technology we can actually bridge the gap between a small and a large bank today. Actually this we are seeing it very much in the market space today because when we go and bid for a large, uh, for example, facility with a large corporate today, you find you are competing with the best in the industry today. Alongside you are competing with SBIs or uh, SGFCs of the world, primarily because you have technology today to bridge the gap. So I see this as a great opportunity to shift uh, the, to bridge the gap between the two. This is one point. Second thing which I would want to say is, today the uh, biggest advantage for a brick and mortar office or for a large bank is a scale. And the scale comes from the distribution channel, which is basically spread across the country for a large bank, which probably may not be there for a small bank. But today with digital coming in, it's not a constraint anymore. Today sitting in Kerala or sitting in Chennai, I can pretty much access any customer anywhere in the country. And if I can offer convenience and product suit which is comparable to the best in the industry, I, have, I don't necessarily have to have a brick and mortar. Today thanks to technology, whether it's collections, whether it is analytics, whether it is underwriting, whether it is sourcing, whether it is uh, uh, marketing, everything is today available digitally and if you are clued on to it, you can pretty much leverage any of these capabilities.